Okay, guys, so we're back at it again here a little bit. Just wanted to touch on something here because I've gotten this question too um, about the uh, bearings. Or uh, I got a few things here I'm going to cover, but uh, let's get to that first. So, what we got here all blown apart is an HPI 4.6F or F 4.6 um, out of my Savage. When you guys have probably seen that when it was all together. So we're going to point out a few things here and we'll get to that bearing talk in a moment. So if you guys want a replacement carburetor but you can't find one for the F4.6 or it's really expensive or something, let's see here if I can, SH28 um, P6, being a 6 port, P6, P8, P3, or big red uh, dynamite carburetors will fit on your HPI 4.6 and they're nice aluminum they're really strong they tune well they're really good so if you guys uh, need one those ones will work and they're a two needle too so you have your low and your high um, also while we're on the subject of that this is the Ofna or Force FC um, 28 P6 and if you guys can't find a piston and sleeve for this engine, your F4.6. It takes the exact same sleeve with the exact same porting. So if you order that sleeve from HPI, it's like 150 bucks. If you order it for one of these, your uh, Ofna Force 28, it'll fit in your 4.6. Same sleeve and everything. Carburetor, crankshaft are the same. Blocks are different. But um, all that shit's interchangeable, leaving the back plate starter shaft and pull starter stuff, just in case you guys didn't know that. Anyhow, onward. So, we, uh, we're waiting on a few parts, so we're going to do a, a rebuild on this, obviously. But someone had brought to my attention, hey, I'm rebuilding an engine, what weight does the bearing go in? I've heard different stories. Okay, so, we're going to look at said bearing here. Actually, you know what, that's disgusting. So, you know what, let's look at a fresh one here. Let's look at a fresh one. Okay, so this is an Avid bearing, and I think the size is on here. There's the size, right there. Twang. Thanks for my buddy from setting that, and uh, known to the state of California to cause cancer, or the state of Cal state of cancer to cause California. There you go. Uh, warning may cause trophies. Yes, good stuff. Okay, so we're going to imagine we're going to install a rear bearing on this engine. We're not going to do that yet, but I will do a full rebuild video on that when the time comes. So if you look at the bearing, my fingernails are awesome, aren't they? You can see the balls in there, and then you can see there's that plastic cage, right like that, that, that dark ring. So when you put these in, you want the, the ball bearings to be visible through the back of the block like this. So you want to put it in this way, not that way. This is the correct orientation because I keep getting the question, what way do they go in? I want to make sure I'm not doing it wrong, blah, 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 you know, whatever. So that's the correct way. Uh, these are the front bearing. It is a 6072 RS. I get these from, from uh, what is that company called? NTN. They're made in Japan. They're really good bearings. These are steel caged. So it doesn't matter what seal you pop off. You can pop off the back or the front. It doesn't matter. Um, it, 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 it'll be the same either way. But if these, usually when you buy them from Avid, or that's good. If you buy them from Avid or uh, Baca or um, whoever else, Acer, they usually pop out one seal for you. That way you won't pop out the wrong one because it'll be the same thing on these except the yeah, the, 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 the ball bearing side is facing out, just like I mentioned here, and the cage side is facing in. So with these ones, because they're steel, caged, in and out, it doesn't matter what way you put it in there. But uh, yeah, 607 TRS for the front, and a 14 by 25 by 6 for the rear. Um, but yeah, just uh, because people kept on asking. And if you have an all steel cage bearing, so it doesn't have that plastic ring like that, like this one, it doesn't matter what way you put it in. Pop both seals out and put it in either way. It doesn't matter. You can do it for the front or the rear. It doesn't make any difference. But like I said, if it's a plastic type like this, ball bearings face out, just like that. So hopefully that covers uh, a few things for you. And um, yeah, this engine's pretty worn out. It's gonna be converted to pull start. 
because uh, I don't want to have to buy all that electric start shit. And uh, just a quick, um, something else I forgot to mention the other day was when I was talking about rod stretch, not only do these pin bores wear out, but the rod physically will grow in length. That's something else I forgot to mention. So keep that in mind in my last video. But uh, everyone asks, this isn't fully clean yet. It's still got a little bit of staining and they're going to give it another clean. But a lot of people ask me, hey man, what do you use to clean your engines with? Um, you can use non-chlorinated brake parts cleaner. Um, you can use heat in the yellow bottle. It is methanol, so please be careful as it is a neurotoxic poison. Most chemicals like that are. Um, a very simple one to use, very effective, is green coolant. Just straight up green coolant in a crock pot. Please do it outside and exercise caution when doing it. Take it for recycling. Don't dump it down the drain, obviously. But if you take and you bake all your parts in there, it usually will not hurt anodizing like this. But if you have painted stuff, um, it'll usually remove all the paint too. So just keep that in mind. Um, I just used a chemical on this one. I didn't put this one in the slow cooker. This one I actually just used super clean and cold water. So what I did was I just got the block wet, sprayed it down, and then just took a, a cheap dish scrubber and just scrubbed it. And then just kept on scrubbing, obviously wearing gloves until it was nice and clean. And then I used some Q-tips on the inside. Just for Q-tip, boy, I know that bothers you. Thanks for watching, stupid. Anyways, and uh, don't use super clean on the piston. Um, you can use it on the crank, but if you are going to use it on the block to clean stuff, um, limit your time use with it and just enough to get everything cleaned up. Uh, don't, don't let it sit. Don't put this with super clean and walk away because it will attack aluminum. It also turn it dark. And if you enjoy pretty purple cylinder heads like I do, super clean will turn this clear. It'll, it'll take off all the color and it'll be colorless. So, um, and it will eat aluminum. So you gotta be very careful of that. I'd suggest maybe even using simple green is a lot safer. And it does help to remove varnish or a strong alcohol, like 99% alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, uh, methanol, things like that. Uh, you could use RC fuel if you want, but it leaves an oily varnish on everything and it's fucking expensive. So why the hell bother? But, um, yeah, so as far as this crankshaft here, there's a port here that needs to be cleaned. There's a little spring in here and a little pin, so be careful you don't lose that. And this right here, I'm just going to take some Scotch Bright and some WD-40 and just clean that up. Do not use sandpaper unless you know what you're doing, unless you have to. There's no deep scratches on here. It's just really stained and corroded. So I'm just going to use a little WD-40 and a Scotch Bright or a uh, SOS pad, and it will be fine. And then we're going to put a new piston and sleeve in there because HPI wanted almost 200 Canadian Copex just for this right here, which is fucking absurd. So I thought, well, the hell with that racket. Um, I happened to notice I had this engine laying around, this FC28, and I took it apart. And sure enough, the parts are the same, just a different package on the outside. But people say, oh, look, it's still got pinch. It's not going through the top. Yeah, but its actual point of where it stops is, see where that line is? Right there. It only goes that far. That's it. And that's where the pinch the pinch zone should be before that. So that's actually where it stops. Because you got to remember, that head button also sits down in there. Right like that. So that piston is only traveling to right... There, that's where it's traveling to. That's it. That's it, just like that. So, just something to keep in mind. But, uh, yeah, so for those guys that were wondering, that's the situation on bearings. And you guys will see a full rebuild on this 4.6 when I get the parts in from Thailand, of all places. And, uh, yes, these are my favorite starter. I highly recommend it. Buy it with the charger. Don't use other chargers. Read the instructions, and this will last you a very, very long time. Get the 2.5 inch, because often the 1.5 is too short for airplanes. Anyways, guys, as always, um, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. And uh, cheers to every one of you. And uh, I start my physio tomorrow, and I will give you updates along the way. Until then, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And keep on burning nitro out there. Later.